What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And today we're gonna to talk about the money lessons I learned as a broke college kid. Basically all the money lessons I learned between the ages of 18 and 21. Before I get started with this topic, definitely make sure to check the link in the description for my Instagram, my book, my website, all that good stuff, it's all there. And last but not least, my Patreon, definitely check that out too. All right, let's jump into this video. So the first lesson I learned is that when you're broke, and when I say broke, I mean you're basically having to depend on other people for your financial well-being. That's what I mean by broke. I don't mean I was walking around with zero dollars and zero cents. It wasn't like that. I had ten dollars and zero cents. But anyway, when I felt that way, like I did feel like I was broke and I did feel like I couldn't really depend on myself. Like I knew that if I was living on my own at the time with no roommates, I would be toast. I knew I wasn't going to make it like that. So just knowing that and having that goal that I was trying to reach, which at the time was just graduate and getting a good job, which I did accomplish, by the way. But anyway, before I accomplished it, I just felt like a different level of hunger. It was like a really strong feeling like, oh, I can't be having this anymore. My parents ain't paying for my college books not one more time. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to be able to pay my own bills, which I did pay my own bills in college. But if it wasn't for them grants, let me tell you, it wouldn't been no bills. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not even just family that I was relying on. I was relying on the student loans and the grants that were given to me. And when I had that, I just had this different level of hunger. Like, I'm going to achieve success no matter what happens. And it made me think completely different about costs and how much money I should be making outside of college. Back when I was in college, this was senior year, by the way, me and my three roommates, we split $400 a piece to a townhouse. It was a four bedroom townhouse. That's $1,600 total for a four bedroom townhouse. And this was near college because we were all done with living on campus. That was, that was dead, you know what I'm saying? We ain't have time for all that. Plus it was cheaper to live off campus, which was why we decided to do that anyway. But anyway, it made me think different about the outcome. I had to actually think like, okay, if I actually want to make something of myself, even though I knew nothing about like the cost of living at the time, because the city that I was in when I was in college and the city that I was moving to for my full-time job after college were essentially the same type of cost of living. Like I knew enough to know that places like New York and California were way more expensive. But in my mind, I was kind of like naive in that. I didn't really feel that any other place I went would be that much more expensive than where I was currently living. That's just a lesson I had to kind of learn on my own. But anyway, as I kept going, I had to learn that like what I'm actually doing, what I'm actually working towards, I have to actually weigh in on what I'm expecting to make from all of this. Like once I get my degree, once I get all my credentials, and once I get my first job, how much money am I going to be making? That was when I hit up like BLS.gov because colleges are really not transparent about how much money you're making outside of college. At least mine wasn't very transparent. Let me put it that way. Like you really have to go up to professors who have worked in the industry that you're wanting to work in and ask them how much you could expect to make. And a lot of times they'll know how much you could expect to make. But then again, there's some times where they don't have any idea of how much you're going to make. There's a lot of majors in college. There's a lot of professions you can go into. And even if you don't go to college, like if you're watching this video and you feel like it's only for people who are going to college or who have went to college, nah, this is for anybody who is progressing in life, who is wanting to make more money. This is for anyone who is working on a skill, on a trade, on a degree, on something for career growth and more money in the future, right? And so I say that because no matter if you're going to college or if you're going for a skill or going for a trade, you still need to do what I'm about to tell you that I did because this is golden right here. And I say that to say this, whether you're going for a bachelor's degree, an advanced degree, whether you're going for a new skill, a trade, a certification, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you're going for that you know is going to give you upward mobility in life and in your career and make you more money, you need to do what I'm about to tell you that I did. So check this out. This is golden right here. I, I made the decision early on that I'm not going to just have them tell me what I could expect to make if I graduate in a specific department. Do you know how many different professions there are within one department? It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, think about, I mean, think about how many professions are actually inside of each department. Just think about that for a second, because within a department, you have different majors within that department. Like in the engineering department, for example, you can have mechanical engineering as your discipline. You can have petroleum engineering as your discipline. You could have industrial engineering. That's the one that I'm doing. 
You could go into engineering management, chemical engineering. I could keep going, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the point. You have all, and they have way different salaries. They're not all just the same at entry level. So think about the department of business. Think about the department of music. You see what I'm saying? So at that time, I had the foresight to know, okay, I already know there's about 10 different paths I can go into. And that's not including the extra paths that are within each individual major that you can go to that actually have a different type of salary. So I was like, well, despite what path I'm going into, I'm not relying on anybody, not my parents, not no loans, not no grants, not a friend, not a family member, nobody. And so I took that ownership early on and based off of my expectations, based off of looking at bls.gov and looking at all these different websites to look at what can I expect in terms of salary when it comes to my degree, even though I have zero years of experience right now, my degree alone, my education alone, the work I put in in college is going to get me there. The credibility I built up in my internship is going to get me there. So how do I get to where I want to be? But first of all, I had to make my standard very clear. I knew I wanted to make at least $55,000 a year or more. That was my goal. So anything below that I knew, okay, that's that's probably not for me. Like I knew in the back of my mind, okay, I know I can take, you know, I, I can't be a chooser because you know what I'm saying? At this time, I'm just graduating college. I can't be out here saying, you were going to pay me this or else. Like, nah, they, they <laughs> hey, look, that, that's how you get laughed at at the interview. But you do have to have a standard because I knew if I'm living under a certain amount of money, first of all, I just spent all this money going to college to get this degree and you're going to pay me pennies? Nah, we're not doing that over here. And second, you have to actually survive and pay off loans and not rely on anybody. So those were the three things that I had for myself that I was not going to settle for. I'll never forget my first job offer was $16 an hour. I knew people who were already making that, you know what I'm saying, with the high school diploma. I was like, nah, we're not doing that. I turned them down. And that was with having no other options at the time. I didn't care because I knew what I wanted. And plus, I had plenty of time before graduation. But had I settled for that $16 an hour job, they might have upped my wage once I graduated because they wanted to hire me like right then, like while I was still in school. They might have upped my wage a little bit to, you know, 18 an hour or 20 an hour. I don't know. Either way, that didn't meet my goal, not even close. And so what I'm saying is that feeling of having to rely on somebody gave me such a perspective that I'm, I'm never, ever for the rest of my life going to have to rely on anybody for anything monetarily, period. That was what I affirmed to myself back then. I just always hated not being able to do for myself. I want to be the one that's able to help other people when they need it. But I also want to be the person who can get everything taken care of for myself, like my bills, any extras that I want, food, water, all that stuff. It's all going to be on me. I'm not about to rely on somebody else for that. I'm not a baby anymore. And I'm not living with my parents anymore. I'm a grown man, so I got to take care of this by myself. That's how I looked at it. And before I get on and before I get on to this next lesson, which I think is even more impactful than the first one, I want to share this with you. The crazy thing is I had to fall flat on my face before I even understood what the first lesson meant. Because I always felt that way, yeah, but when I had my GPA drop from a 3.6 to a 2.7 in one semester, that was when my whole world fell upside down. It just I mean, when I fell, I fell hard. I I don't know what I don't know what this was, but I thought it, you know what I'm saying? It, it fit I'm keeping it in there. But yeah, when I fell, I fell hard. It was, it was because I just I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. Skipping class, hanging with the boys, parties, being too busy socializing with the females, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it was. And once I got that reality check that was my GPA that almost dropped by a full point, I was like, how am I going to get anywhere near my goal if I'm over here screwing around just doing whatever? How am I going to reach my goal if I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to do to reach it? I'm not even putting the work in to reach the goal. And it reflects right here on this GPA. GPA isn't everything. Don't get me wrong. But man, I was hot with myself because I was like, I can't believe because I know how smart I am. I've always been a smart student, a smart person in general. So I was really, really, really upset with myself when I saw this. Like there was no level of disappointment or disdain that my family could possibly have for me that I didn't have for myself at that given moment in time. Absolutely not, because I dropped the ball. 
I'm the one spending my money on my college degree via student loans and, and grants. But I'm what am I going into debt for? To screw up? Because that's, that's what it felt like. And so I had to think bigger than just my long-term goal. I also had to think about what am I paying for right now? I'm paying for this. And I'm going to have to pay for it after college too. Because if you didn't know, I was definitely working on the off season. I was working at Food Lion. I was grinding over there. I hated that job. It was still probably my least favorite job of all time. And it wasn't because of the type of work it was. It was just the type of people I was around. But that's another story for another day. But yeah, I was working there so I could pay off the rest of whatever my grant didn't pay. And I also bought my, my college books too. I'm like, look, if my GPA keeps dropping, how am I supposed to get into an internship and be taken seriously by one of the biggest companies in the world? I didn't just want an internship with any company. I definitely didn't want a free internship. Look, they're jipping. I feel like they're jipping you. If, if you're, if you're going to put your time into a company and they not pay you, that is highway robbery. I don't care what anybody says about it, especially in my field where you actually work really, really, really hard. I wasn't sitting around just printing papers and bringing people coffee like they portray on the TV shows that interns do. Interns actually do a lot of work. That's, that's another story for another day. I'm rambling now. But anyway, so right there, I was like, that is not going to be me. I'm not going to be the one who gets passed up from big internships and have to settle for the smaller ones. And then right there, that's already cutting my goal down because how am I going to sit there and demand 55000 a year or more or at least $50,000 a year or more? And be taken seriously if my GPA doesn't even reflect what I can actually do. I had to build that credibility. So I did. Which leads me to my next lesson. Planning is crucial to your success. Planning, planning, planning. And the, the most powerful thing I realize about planning is it's not just about being, you know, detailed and organized. You know what I mean? And. I'm going to do this at this time. I'm going to do this at that time. Like, no, like it's much bigger than that. And I had a very, very, very strong reason that I was wanting to do what I was doing. Besides everything that I just stated in this video, I've always had a, a very strong hunger for success. And I just had to see myself there. I was like, I know my goal, like my written goal is 55000 a year or more. But what if I could make sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year? I just like start seeing myself there. And then as time went on, my goals changed. Like at first, I wanted to be an engineer. And I, I was gung-ho about being an engineer now. But then that, that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not what happened. I ended up being a manager from the start. I'll tell you, college really did not prepare me to do that. But that's okay. That's okay. That's the path that chose me. But I had to see myself there before this path even uncovered itself. So the way I did it was I had to see myself without a freaking 2.7 GPA. It was funny because it was some crazy timing because you know what I'm saying? During the first semester of college, this was freshman year now. During the first semester of college, I was like, man, college is easy. I got a 3.6. We're good. I can, Hey, what y'all doing tonight? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was with whatever at that point. But every, but every good thing comes to an end. And it definitely did when I got that bad GPA. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm talking about my cumulative GPA went from 3.6 to a 2.7. So for that semester, you already know it was worse than a 2.7. Which means I had like a 1.9 that second semester. You get what I'm saying? Because if we're talking about because if we're talking about two semesters now, these are just the first two semesters of my college. I went from a 3.6 to a 2.7. That automatically means I had to have had a 1.9 that second semester to balance it out. See, I'm still getting worked up about this. Look, we, we over here, you know what I'm saying, done graduated five years ago, going on six, still getting worked up about this mess, right? now. I'm, I'm just saying. Anyway, I had to see myself without a 2.7. I had to start seeing myself with a 3.0 and then a 3.2. But it was crazy because me and my friends, we had this thing where we asked each other what our GPA was. That first semester, I was like, hey, yeah, I got, I got, I got a 3.6. You know what I'm saying? You know, after that first semester, that's what I was saying. But then the second semester, I was real quiet. I didn't bring it up not one time. And even after that, I really didn't bring it up unless somebody asked me. But like, I'm just saying it's crazy how fast the tables can turn and how quickly life can humble you. I got quiet like three years straight, kept my head down, you know what I'm saying? And I just grinded. I went to class. I studied like crazy. I studied until I got tired of looking at the screen, looking at the book, whatever I was looking at. I got tired of looking at it. And that was when I knew. I've seen enough and I've learned the lesson. And 
I take a little break from that, then it will be like second nature. And I figured out how I learned that way. Like it really caused me to double down and really think about my goals and how I was going to get there. And, you know, even though I don't use half of the knowledge I learned in the classes that I took, I knew that in order to get to my goal, I had to do well in those classes. There were even some companies that said internship entry 3.0 GPA or above. I'm not even kidding. Like that was literally the standard some of these companies had. And, and that's smart because they don't want just anybody. They want somebody who takes themselves seriously enough to take their college career serious. And that's a fair ask, if you ask me. And so I started my planning. During that summer, I had plenty of time, you know what I'm saying, to sit around feeling sorry for myself in between my part-time job that I already hated. So it really wasn't that hard to feel sorry for myself. And so I, I created this master plan. I, I still, I cannot find the file to this day. I can't find it, but it was one of the most elaborate things I think I've ever put together in my life as far as planning goes. Like I had everything planned. I'm talking like I planned out the next three years of my college career perfectly. You know how you got to have like a college advisor? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I was like, screw the advisor. My advisor made me so mad. I was like, he is the most worthless human being on this earth. Like that was how I felt about him at the time. But anyway... Like, he basically made me figure out everything. I was like, you know what? What do I need you for? I, forget it. I'm going to figure it out. And so I did. I planned every... When I say everything, I planned everything out. I planned what times I would go to class. I planned who was going to be teaching the class. Now, obviously, I could only do the, the more intricate stuff like one semester at a time. But what I'm saying is I had the layout for every semester for the rest of my college career done already. Like I already knew which classes I was going to take because they try to trick you, man. Like, like you, you have to pay very close attention sometimes when you're in a certain major because there's only certain classes that are offered during certain seasons. So it's like only during the fall, only, you know what I'm saying? Only during the fall, only during the winter. It's like, well, man, when, when am I going to take the class? I already got 17 credit hours, so they tried to get you, so I planned that thing out perfectly. I even put some summer classes in there, just because I wanted to get it over with even quicker. And I planned out, you know, I looked up the reviews for the teachers who were good, who because like, you know what I'm saying, my biggest excuse for my GPA dropping so drastically was, well, my professor just thought, well, it's my responsibility. But if I'm going to make, you know, things easier for myself, it's my responsibility to choose the classes that have the professors that have a good reputation. So I know that if I mess this up, it's definitely my fault. My voice is cracked. Definitely my fault. And of course, you can't get out of every bad professor. Sometimes there's just going to be bad professors, but... As much of it as I can control, I did. And even when I did have the bad professors, I did well because you know what? I doubled and tripled down on my studies. And so the way that translates in life is I fell flat on my face when it came to my career too. I felt like I was failing in my career. I felt like I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And to be honest, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I had some toxic bosses, man. Like they were saying, yeah, good job, man. Good job. Then I heard, I literally heard them having conversations like, yo, this kid ain't cutting. I don't know where y'all got him from, but he, hey, I don't know how much longer he's going to make it around here. They were talking like this when I was like two, three months in. But yeah, I talk a lot about that in my book. Y'all should check my book out, man. Uh, it comes out August 14th. Shameless plug. So anyway, it made me go home and plan and see myself the future version of myself that I wanted to be. It made me plan, first of all, budgeting, saving, all that good stuff, because I really wasn't doing that as, as much as I should have. Like, yeah, I had like a routine for saving money every month, but I wasn't really doing it aggressively. I wasn't really thinking about my future as far as my money goes that much. I was just like, okay, right now I just want to put away 200 a month. Like I was doing it very sparingly. It was like I was afraid of saving money or something. It was really weird. And I was just moving like, Really, really, really slow. And, and I mean, I didn't really have anybody to like go to about how to set things up. So I was just kind of like winging it. You know what I mean? So that's what I was doing. But once things got real, real bad, I really started to hyper focus and I, I got like obsessed. Like I was looking up YouTube videos, everything. Like I was really, really into this stuff. I was reading articles. I was looking at how to make extra money. That was how I got on the kick of side hustles and everything. I was in those like Amazon survey things that pay you like 10 cents per survey. I was, look, man, I was doing a lot of stuff. And to be frank, some of it was a waste of time, but I was planning, I was seeing myself, okay, I, I was seeing my the version of myself, I was seeing a version of myself that was making $400 a month passively. I was seeing a version of myself who was confident in my career. I was seeing a version of myself that was making six figures a year, and I began to plan. This is where I see myself in five years. This is where I see myself in 10 years. This is how much money I want to be making. 
this is what would make a difference in my life if I was making this amount of money. This is what I would do with the money. If I was making a pass of $400 a month, this is what I would do with it. And at the time, I was, I was very simple about it. I was like, yeah, if I had an extra $400 a month, I would put some of it in my savings and some of it into my debt. But you see stuff like that goes a long way when you're thinking about it and you see yourself there. And so it changed the way I thought about money. And so it therefore changed the way I treated the money I got. And you got to do that throughout your life. Like your goals are not always going to be the same. And sometimes you're going to get yourself out of certain financial situations to where you make so much money. Like now you can spend it as freely as you want and it really won't make a difference because you're a fairly disciplined spender. You get what I'm saying? Like I don't splurge, you know what I'm saying? I don't buy designer stuff. I don't just go out buying crazy stuff all the time and spend thousands of dollars on myself. I spend about the same every single month. And that's even if I just spend a little extra on stuff that I want. Usually the stuff that I want is like food at a, at a pretty nice restaurant. That's what I like. But it doesn't really make a difference nowadays that I've gotten to a level of where I wanted to be a few years ago. And so you have to evolve as you go. You have to constantly change your financial goals as you go. It's not always going to be to penny pinch or to save up a certain amount of money. It might be to own a certain amount of stock. It might be to get into a better place. Like if you want to buy a home instead of living in an apartment, like you can, you can make these decisions once you get to that level. And that's why it's so crucial that you plan your way there. You ain't going to just be able to hope your way there. I've tried. I done tried to hope. Hope ain't doing nothing for me. It's nice. It feels good. It's all warm and fuzzy. But you know what I'm saying? Hope is not going to be what gets you there. You have to, or at least not by itself. Let me put let me put that in there. Not by itself. You have to hope while you're actually doing the work. And not even just hope, but also believing in yourself and believing in your capability to get there. And I would recommend not telling people about your goals because you know what I'm saying? When you're 21 years old, or if you're really any age, <laughs> below like 40, and you're talking about some, I want to make six figures, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. There's going to be only a few people who say, yeah, you can do that. But a lot of people, because they can't do it, they're going to try to tell you that you can't do it. And you know what I'm saying? Depending on how close they are to you and what level of influence they have in your life, you might believe them. Just keeping it honest. But yeah, that's the second one. So anyway, number three, and this is the final part to the puzzle. Are you ready? You've got to prioritize the right way. So everything I done just said in this video is all going to boil down to the third thing. And that's prioritizing what's important. So I didn't really have priorities in college until I fell flat on my face. I didn't really have priority, you know, when I got on my own and when I was, you know, starting my career. I didn't really have my own priorities there until I fell flat on my face. And then I had priorities magically. But then it, it was more than just setting priorities and saying, okay, this is what's important. It was also treating it like it was important. Like the time you spend on bettering your craft, that is a priority. Time you spend on your health, that's a priority. Time you spend on your personal finances, that is a major priority. So is health, but you get what I'm saying. This is a financial channel. But you know what else is a priority? Having some time to relax, time to decompress, uh, hobbies, you know what I mean? Something that lets your mind get away from all the chaos because you can really work your way into unhappiness and even depression. That's something I wish I made more of a priority of when I first got started because I worked myself until my brain was numb. Like I felt like I was overworked and underpaid. I just felt like I was heavily overworked and way underpaid. And this was, I'm talking like I came straight out of college making 65 and up, like within the first couple of years. And so like the, the first year was like 67 or something like that. The second year it was like 82. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I was making good money. And at this time, the cost of living was super, super cheap. This was a different time. I felt like, you know what I'm saying? I, even, even though looking back, I was making good money for that age and for that time. The way I look at it now is, yeah, but at what cost? You you worked so much, you didn't really set boundaries. Like boundaries is another priority. You gotta set boundaries on your job because like they're gonna just make you do whatever just because they feel like they can. Hey, we need you in there tonight. We need you to do this tonight. Like I didn't even realize I couldn't say no. I didn't realize I could. I didn't realize, it, it really never crossed my mind that I could just say, no, I can't do that tonight. And so it wasn't until I got better at my craft. It wasn't until like I prioritized my finances and improved the results in my life to where I felt comfortable enough to be like, nah, y'all can kick rocks. Or if I took PTO and they tried to deny it, I was like, hey, you can deny it if you want to. I'm not going to be here. 
because I'm salary and I'm getting paid either way. You get what I'm saying? Like it took me a certain it took me a certain amount of work to get to that level to where I felt so comfortable to do that. And even after that, it took a different level of concentration and getting results until I was able to say, you know what? Screw this place altogether. I'm working somewhere else. Because trust me, I wanted to walk out so many times. I wanted to leave so many times, but I couldn't because I knew I wasn't where I wanted to be yet. So I had to prioritize that. When you prioritize your growth, your improvement, your intelligence, your skills, when you prioritize you having healthy finances and being disciplined with your money, when you prioritize learning what to do with your money once you get it, all these prob all these external problems are going to disappear in the snap of a finger because at that time you are going to be in control. But even outside of like from a career or from even a school perspective, Think about things that you prioritize in life that are just, you know, important to you, but you don't necessarily treat them like the priorities. I mean, think about your relationships. Think about your family members. Think about your significant others. Think about your spouse. Like a lot of times, and I've done this several times, so like I'm not even excluding myself. I, I straight up know that I haven't always been able to pay the amount of attention to my family members and call and talk to my family members as much as I could have. I know that for a fact. And that's something that I'm always working to improve on. That should be a priority in your life, though. Your mental health should be a priority. Your physical health should be a priority. Your personal finances should be a priority. And as an adult, we have to all figure out a way to make all of our priorities work. We have to figure out a way to make time for every bit of our priorities because they're priorities, which means they are the most important thing right now. There were times when I was in school when I got when I felt like I was tired. I was like, I don't really want to do any study. I don't really want to do anything today. There were times at work where I was like, man, I'm I'm tired. It's the end of the day. I, I'll send the email out tomorrow. There were times where I was at home, and I was like, man, I actually have time right now. I could I could call my uncle. You know what I'm saying? I can call my grandparents. And anytime I put something off like for another day, or later or whatever, I would always regret it because because I would always spend time. Later, when I really felt like I didn't have the time doing it, like, for example, when I wanted to put off the studying in college and I decided to go out with my friends instead because I was tired. I wasn't tired when I was with my friends, just saying. But what that did was it set me back from the target I initially had. If I wanted to have this information learned by Tuesday, now it's Friday and I still don't have it learned. Now I got to cram on the weekend. That's just a simple example, but it happens all the time. And I think anybody in school can definitely resonate with what I just said. The email that I wanted to send out at work, you know what I'm saying? The next day, I completely forgot about it. And then a week later, it's like, oh crap, that email. Too late. Emails are very, very important and slept on at work. I just want y'all to know, like, send your emails out. Public service announcement. Anyway, and when I decide to, when I decide to just let time go by before calling family members, it's just like, I don't know, like, it's just like a bad feeling. You don't want to feel like, you're neglecting your own family. Like even though you think about them all the time, they still want to hear from you. And that's something I've had to learn over and over and over again. And you could say the same thing about friends too. Even though I do think me and my friends have a pretty good understanding that I'm not the type of guy you need to talk to every day or even every month. Like just call me, we'll pick up right where we left off. Like I'm busy, you're busy, cool. But anyway, before I start rambling for another 20 minutes, <laughs> I just want to let you know, these are the three things that I learned between the ages of 18 and 21, just as a young person, just as like a, a broke college student. You know what I'm saying? And now that I've gotten myself to a good level and I'm where I wanted to be, you know what I'm saying? I have surpassed my five-year plan in less than five years and I'm happy about that. But like I said, you have to constantly evolve. So like, I'm already thinking about the future now. You know what I'm saying? I'm already thinking about what's next now. Like, I'm not going to get complacent where I'm at. I want to continue to grow and improve and get better and increase everything. Health, wealth, fun, everything. And it's only going up from here. And I think anybody should have that mindset of continuously improving and adding on to yourself. And that was the purpose of this whole video. So anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.